bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like really a bathroom. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, we really energized the, the neighborhood and the businesses in, in that area, and would, they would really like to see us do something down there. And I think we have some alternatives that I think we can deliver. And I think we can deliver something, um, you know, that brings people, brings energy to that area and that district. And I uh, would like to, you know, discuss some of those um, today and, you know, maybe provide an, an update where we are in negotiations with some of those potential alternatives and, you know, really kind of get on board with a, a path forward. Um, that we would like to, you know, do something to break ground this year to open a facility in, in 2019, then we're going to need some direction to do that. Um, but I'm confident that we can put something together, you know, to present to this body and then present to the council uh, in order to move that forward. Is there something that anything else that you wanted to uh, two things? One is that was kicking ahead. You know, we, yep. uh, we when we look at this years ago, just baseball. There wasn't any other interest, but I think our working on this for two years kind of convinced some other communities Absolutely. and them and us that this was a viable uh, development project and. Look, like Kevin said we lost baseball, 32 games, and the, and, and the stadium. But um, after working on this so hard for the last couple of years, uh, we're more committed now than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. We just you walk out there and you can just see it. The, the small businesses in that area are, are they want to see something happen. The neighbors in that area want to see something happen. There are people on the council that want to see something happen. Yes. Uh, so, uh, like Kevin said, we're, we're here to talk to you. We've had uh, a number of meetings. Um, I, uh, some of them are in negotiation, let you know kind of what we're working on. We need direction from you. We, look, there's a lot to do in the city, and uh, this is still my priority. Uh, if you, you tell us the interest isn't there, then we're going to move on. But, uh, I think we need to have a discussion about some things that, you know, Kevin's been working on and working on and um, see if we can't regroup and maybe come up with something even better. Kevin, I have one question on <coughs> the Bullfrogs. Was there ever any indication from them that we were not moving fast enough so that we could get started this year on a project for next year? I was not given any indication that things either A, were, um, look, I understand government and it's a process that we have to go through. Um, I guess I didn't ever get any indication that, you know, we were at a period where either A, they were looking yeah, yeah. at alternatives, or B, in this case, it actually signed up for another alternative. Right. Um, you know, I, I think, look, and that's why part of what we talked about was even prior to that discussion last week is having this back on the agenda to decide, you know, about some of these contingencies and then moving that path forward. Again, a window of opportunity to get something done in 2019. We're starting to get cramped. Um, but with that, no. Um, I think, that, as the mayor said, it was kicked and it was a surprise. And, yeah. um, but we just no moving forward, not to take things for granted. And, you know, uh, said it before, in, in some cases there's a window of opportunity, and sometimes time can kill deals. Yep. Well, I'm sure there's no doubt that part of the idea that we want to move forward on this project. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what we're, we're looking for. Um, you know, with, with that, um, I think we have a few options. Um, as I said, providing a status of where we're at with some of the, the previous discussions in terms of uh, potential users, um, tenants, land acquisitions, um, and, and strategy for moving forward, um, I think would be appropriate. Um, you know, maybe discuss some of those in the closed session. Um, you know, I don't want to put all our cards on the table. Um, so, um, you know, with that, um, after that, we can follow up and take some direction of how we want to go. And Good. as the mayor said, we want how we'd like to move forward on this project. I think that motion is going to closed session. Second. Very yeah. Any comments from the motion to second, then we'll move to going to closed session. Uh, Kevin, call the vote. All right. Um, you want to read the language? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. The authority may convene in closed session pursuant to section 1985 one of the Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating the sale of public properties, investment of public funds, or conducting other specified public business as necessary to uh, or competitive of the bargaining reasons. The authority may thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to section 1985 two of the statutes to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. All right. 
Perry Meyer? Yes. Gary Delvo? Yes. Jim Bloomer? Yes. Norman Joe Moore? Yes. Melanie Parma? Yes. Matt Schuler? Yes. Tom Weber? Yes. For the uh, public, uh, during the uh, closed session, I want you to know that the uh, Redevelopment Authority members and the staff uh, thoroughly uh, discussed uh, this site. As one member said, this is a gem that we have to look at. I want everyone to know that the RDA is uh, firmly committed to future development of that area. And we have uh, several thoughts about that. And uh, in fact, Alderman Moore has a motion to uh, uh, propose in what direction we're going to be going. So uh, I'll offer or ask you for your motion, Joe. I'll make a motion that we direct staff to allocate up to $10,000 in neighborhood enhancement funds for design work and study on the proposed revisions to the event center and additional elements suggested for the shipyard project. Second. We have a motion for Joe, second for Tom. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, carry. All right, thank you. Good. 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 Okay. All set? Kevin? Yeah, I got it. Oh, number two? No, take off. You're leaving two? I know. Like I got Who's going to run the show? Cheryl? Cheryl. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Brian, we're going to step up. Let's get that out. 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 This one, yeah, they refer to us. They refer to us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Ten six, ten eleven, and ten fifteen. Cheryl. All right, I'm going to pitch it here. Ooh. All right. Um, if you remember, back in 2017, toward fall, we had talked about um, allocating money from our TIF 12 to TIF 6, 11, and 15 um, in the process, so that we could close them in 2018. So we have complete on um, the project through the end of 2017. There's been enough money now to cover these um, kids so that they would have a um, that they could meet all their obligations. So this next step is to now um, put through the resolution to close the three, three kids in 2018. Um, so that's really what the process here is. Um, there is copies here. However, I know the date is wrong because our opponent meeting is actually the 19th. But um, could you I just roughly tell us where those three kids are? Um, yes, we have um, just roughly. Um, kid six. Um, I, um, I don't have any right information with me. Um, one's Old Main, one's okay. um, Dash 311, and Tid 15. I don't have that information. So mm -hmm. They're all successful Tids, and now they're at the They're all, um, two of the three Tids do not even have tax increment coming in in this place. In this case, they have um, in areas where there was properties that were torn down, and two of them do not even have 
Um, so they have negative fund balances, and so they were, they'll were they never get, um, become positive. So that's why we um, chose to allocate them in 2017, make them whole by the allocating from 12, which is our industrial park. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then this is just to find a, finish the process in which we started in 17 to close them out. As I was going to say, we already approved to move this far. Yep, this, this is just the final, 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 final process. I make a motion to dissolve TIB 6, 11, and 15. Right, we have copies of the resolutions if you would like. Uh, motion by uh, Gary, second by... I'll second. To uh, dissolve uh, TID 6, TID 11, and TID 15. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, carried. Number three, consideration of possible action on communication from <coughs> December 8, 2017, to the Common Council by Alderman Zimmel on behalf of David Borkowski that the city consider constru constructing a set of decorative metal arches, identify the dual entrance of the historic area of the Broadway Business District, referred to staff at the December 12, 2017 meeting. Okay, so if you read in the report here, um, Director Bonk spoke with um, Director Grenier at Public Works, and I think he might have also spoken on Broadway with regards to those arches. Um, Steve Grenier had some issues with ADA accessibility because they have to be mounted within the walkway sidewalks area, as well as there are larger trucks that are coming through on Broadway. So there were some issues with regards to access underneath an archway that would span across Broadway. Um, there was also questions about the appropriateness about that type of marker denoting a district compared to kind of an, an entire area. Um, this might be from the on Broadway folks, maybe the connectivity um, with regarding investing in beautification. We should consider things that link the district on the west and some of the core downtown businesses more than just define it by two archway areas. So the recommendation would be at this point to receive and place on file, but continue to work at beautification elements of the Broadway area. I, I personally happen to love the idea. I mean, I see it frequently in many markets and, and having little districts. In fact, when we were talking about that uh, property on Maple Street, mm -hmm. and I said, no, we're going to get people involved and in, in name this area, in this district, that's a development district or whatever. That just has a full character. I mean, the, the, the idea is there's a hundred cities I can take you to that have archways uh, as gateways going into different districts of their communities. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is whatever, this is whatever district. Um, yes, there are elements, but let's not just throw off the, the flag and say, well, we have to put it right away on the sidewalks. Well, squeeze it, go up higher for the trucks, what, whatever. Let's at least look at it. I think it's has a great deal of charm and character to a city when you start talking about this district, that area. So I, I love the idea. So you want further commentary from public works? I would, want, well, I would, work, I would want somebody, <coughs> I don't care if it's commentary, I would like somebody to look at the feasibility, the true feasibility, with a, with a, well, we want this attitude instead of what makes it difficult to do. Okay. Okay. There's a will, there's a way. Trust. I mean, but how can we make it uh, work and, and yet be part of a bigger picture? Uh, 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 bigger What's the bigger picture? Well, I mean, the Broadway <laughs> District has a master plan okay. that that was drafted with public input, and uh, at no point were the archways a part of that that master plan. And, I mean, I would say if City Council's got money to throw around. Um, we, we brought this to our design committee for discussion, and, and that's the, the comments that Cheryl had provided. Um, you know, the city, you know, our design committee said, gee, if you got money to throw around, we'd rather see it invested in the master plan that we have for the district uh, rather than creating something new. But I think uh, we actually have two urban design professors who, who sit on that design committee who both said that archways are nice in the right areas. Um, just the, the way that our district is constructed, these might not be um, the way that archways are traditionally best utilized. And of course, they're experts in that area, um, you know, so I'm kind of relying that feedback um, from them. The big part is they typically like, I mean, they're, they're generally used to designate sort of the entry and exit of a district. Um, you know, on the south end, you've got Mason Street corridor, that, or, or the, the, the overpass that kind of obstructs that, and of course, the shipyard and what's going on there. Um, on the north end, I think Director Grenier had some concerns about, you know, maintaining access to uh, designated highway as well as um, uh, access to the port. ADA with the placement on, in the mm -hmm. right of way, how that would have to be anchored on that in the north end. And there's no other place to anchor than in the Well, I think, right, if you're doing the structure, unless you attach it to a building somehow. But. Mm -hmm. 
So, I, you know, and, and again, our design committee said, gee, some type of design element, yes. You know, just mm -hmm. the actual construction archway that goes over the street um, it was something that they didn't necessarily favor um, as it relates to the master plan. And that there are actually what they call designated markers that are contained within the master plan and that, that, you know, we just lack the funding um, to produce. But those. So you, you're talking about some type of like a, a monument entry or something like that? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things that are actually plan? already in the district. Uh, you've got one near the Hubbard Street Park right. area, and there's one on the corner of uh, um, Walnut and Broadway. Um, I mean, there's two in the entire district, and, you know, there's no continuity within the district. And so the fear with the design committee is that it's another design thing that's added into a district that, I mean, it, where, where the master plan hasn't been followed for years. And so it's, it's kind of like the smattering of things that keeps coming in rather than adhering to a master plan, again, that was drafted with public input. And, and I, would, I, I would probably agree with you on that is, you know, I've had a chance since our last meeting, right, to drive up and down the street. So I mean, there's, right, there's the pillars, right? They're brick and you know, limestone, and that's a design element. There's the crosswalks. And, and this adds in another design element that I just start to go, oh, it's just not contagious. Mm -hmm. It's not all feeling to me like one design. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'll apologize. I don't have a master plan, but I'm glad to hear that it is. Because um, that's to me what it feels like is we're throwing in an element because there was a comment about adding in an element. And I'd much rather say, especially with what we just talked about in the previous article on the shipyard is, what's the whole? And if there is something we can do on a funding side, I'd rather link it all with that. Because I don't think we can now think about Broadway and then the shipyard down there. It's what's oh, the one. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Three cents. I agree to follow the master plan. Oh. You stay there, guy, or you're gonna? Well, I'm. I'm just waiting for an opportunity here. Uh, you're invited to say something. I, I, do I have your permission to speak? <laughs> Go right ahead. Um, first of all, this was a a new idea brought, and it's not a new idea everywhere in the world. There are other places that have these things, and. Um, it's all great. We have master plans. We have a number of designs, use designs for Broadway over the years. But these are all works in progress. And you know when I when I started the Broadway renovation, it's probably 18, 20 years ago now. We got the initial money. The initial request was really to develop it from Mather Street to 9th Street. We initially put a little less than five million over a two-year period into the area, basically between you know, like Ellisman and and Walnut, and maybe a little bit beyond. Now I had hopes at that time that funding would continue and it would, we would just keep developing along. And I appreciate the remark about the shipyard. Yes, that's all part of this here too. But uh, I think uh, we want to emphasize and promote the historic nature of that area. And something that really identifies the area becomes a magnet for that area too. It becomes a, a landmark that, hey, go to the arches there, it's a block away, it's this and that or another thing. It becomes something to identify your area. And I, I, I'm going to uh, put a mild complaint in here. Um, Mr. Bartikovsky, who really was researching this, going into it, has never been contacted once by our staff. He was not aware of the meeting here today, except through me. And I'm only aware of it because, you know, I get packets and stuff like that. Um, I did write to her. I came to the staff here trying to find out what was going on. And, well, we learned that uh, staff had met with Department of Public Works, which I think is all well and good, and also met with on Broadway. But of course, we were not only not included, well, I guess we were excluded. And they never examined the ideas of what the, the 
fellow that I brought the request in for had to say about it. He's really put off about it. He says, that, you know, he's done a lot for Broadway himself. He developed a property that, that I don't know what it was before. Dirty bookstore. Turned it into uh, a going facility. He's remodeling a place over on the east side. He's, he's, he's come from outside our area, and for the last 20 years, he's made significant contributions. He was one of the original butchers. He's the one who really had the idea to put the farmer's market on Broadway. It all put that together. He's a very imaginative, interesting, and a guy who does things. And basically, our staff didn't even have the courtesy to give him a telephone call. And of course, we're interested in, you know, are there different designs? What are the costs of them? Uh, is this something that really would fit? Is it a really good idea? We wanted to have a, a good discussion about it. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not opposed to everything the master plan might have in it. Or any other, I guess I was, I was told, this is just through an email from Dr. Vonk, and he did say we could meet before the meeting here if we wanted to, but I couldn't get it put together with Mr. Bernikowski in the last week. So, but um, <coughs> uh, we were told that on Broadway said, well, they thought the money would be better used for other things, greenery and et cetera, et cetera. Well, we're not against greenery or any of the other things. And we're talking about putting an enhancement to the area. Maybe it wouldn't be built this year or next year. Maybe it's going to be in connection with a shipyard project. But we think that there should be, uh, we think it would, should is the wrong word. We think it would be a, a potential good idea to have something that would really help designate that historic district and make the landmark necessary that would attract people to the area. Mm -hmm. I appreciate Mr. Weber's comments. But uh, I, I would like this referred back and more thought put to it and see how it can possibly combine with the existing plans that we have. A lot of the plans are quite old. And that doesn't mean they're worthless or anything else. Okay, but this was an idea. And I think they should at least have the courtesy of involving the people who brought the request forward. I mean, to not even speak to him, not even call him, not even form of a meeting is wrong. It's totally wrong. So, I still think it's a good idea. Uh, when he brought the idea to me, I said, and I, I think, you know, other people have had this idea too. I put out on Military Avenue. I think you're, you're talking about it. Give me some kind of entrance way that, hey, we have a business district this way off of Lombardi Avenue. Something that identifies. So, I, I, I don't think we should just cast it into the dustbin, receive it in place on file. I think it needs to be considered as part of the overall plan there. And we need to get some costs and, you know, what are you doing? I mean, uh, I, I, I like to solve problems rather than throw up roadblocks. So if there's a problem with the high eighth or whatever it is, uh, let's at least examine it and let's put some costs to it and then decide, well, is this, is this the best, is this a good way to use the money or is it, uh, Cost prohibitive. Okay, thank you, Joel. Uh, okay. Yeah, Harry. Um, a few years ago, Gary had uh, brought for the RDA wayfinding uh, <coughs> type signs and, and entrances to the city and stuff, and nothing really ever happened with that. But uh, one of the things that I thought then, and kind of reminded to now, maybe arches aren't the right thing. There's enough reasons to rule mm -hmm. those out. But look, when you're coming off of Atkinson Drive, off off the highway, it's your quickest access to your downtown to have something at Atkinson directing people to the Broadway district, whether it be a, a pillar or the wrought iron is, is great, some sort of mm -hmm. sign. And then as you get down to the end of Elk, something there, you know, uh, near the homeless shelter in the park. Um, again, just something that kind of designates this is where you're at. Um, I don't know that there would be a huge cost. And like I said, it doesn't need to be an in, in arch. It doesn't need to go over the top of the, of the road. But yeah, it doesn't, I mean, it, it certainly doesn't hurt to put a couple of designs together and say, look, we could do this, we could do this at this cost, and, and then decide if we want to do that. And if it's not enough, then, you know, we can make that decision. Do we want to do this, do we want to do nothing, or do we want to go all out? Um, 
But I think just tabling it right now or just re you know putting it on file and, and doing away with it, I think we could look at this a little bit more. I, you know, like I said, the wayfinding thing kind of fell aside and, and Gary didn't really pursue it. I mean, he asked about it a few times, but we never really pursued it uh, any further. So I mean, I'd, I'd be fine. In, in fact, I would make a motion that we refer this back to staff to um, maybe come up with a couple of design elements that can be proposed. Or alternatives. Or alternatives, sure. And then, could you I, I really include what those the people who brought those forward in, in, the, in the discussions? Yeah, and if we could bring Mr. Barkowski in and get ideas from him, I mean, it's seeking public input from some of these creative individuals. And I think the other consideration, <coughs> I think the other consideration as well is that uh, now that we're going to do a master plan, if you will, for the shipyard area, we'll see how that fit, how, how would these signs fit into that plan as well. So uh, all of that. But the this isn't something we want to do in three months. This might be part of a two or three year plan. It's just the idea. Sure. We wanted it properly vetted and and a decision made of whether this would be something that would draw traction to that area. Absolutely. Well, right. We have a, I just want to make a quick comment on something. Someone had mentioned about the coming off of Lombardi Avenue. I remember when we had those discussions on military evidence. Etc. And I think Cheryl will remember that as, as the as the gate the main gateways coming into the city. You know, mm -hmm. yep. I got on this yep. thing about you know we don't make them attractive, we don't make them welcoming, we don't do any of that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, you know, let's let's be proud of the little districts. If we've got an older area, if we've got a historic district, if we've got uh, whether it's wayfinding or something. The the two monuments that are on Broadway for for that district are I mean okay. <laughs> Uh, that's they're, that's as kind of word as you can get for it. Pardon? That was as, that's as kind of word as you could get for it, and we, we paid about seventeen thousand a piece for it. You can believe yeah. that. Uh, it, precisely. So I, yeah, I, I think we could pay a little more attention. Well, we have a motion on the floor from Joel uh, that we refer the staff and ask you staff to come back to us. Oh, Randy, <laughs> I see you, Randy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was. Uh, uh, we're talking about uh, something that acts in drive. And I think we need to take a, also be aware that, you know, if you go east, you're going to end up on Broadway. But you go west, you're going to end up on military, which is, to, and we're also hoping to do some, I mean, it's in its infancy, but I'm not, and I'm sure what the identity is going to end up coming to be. But we're hoping to do some things on belt there, too. So you might want to come up with a whole multiple. Start with the concept. Concept, yeah. So I'd just like to keep, keep all those things in mind. Right. I know that Mr. Bartikowski was thinking of somewhere between two and four arches. And, but, you know, if it, other things that could become landmarks that are something noticeable, I mean, you see exits, think, there is nothing that really invites you to the downtown. I mean, you come off the highway or something, it's, we've complained about it in the past. But, uh, but these are things that you need to create some kind of something large enough that it can become a landmark say hey go where that big sign is or go where that arch is and you're going to find it. you need you need landmarks you need things to identify an area so i mean that that was the idea behind all this and we just wanted to study that's all okay thank you Harry, if i can make just one comment too in i mean our design committee when we had the discussion around this topic i mean they they really approached it as a kind of a yes or no you know would arches fit the master plan or not you know, and that was the feedback that we got. But I, but I would completely support Alderman Zimmer that landmarks matter. Um, the district is lacking them. The master plan does call for them, but the funding doesn't exist. And so, if if uh, to Alderman Joe's point, if this is something that can be referred back to staff, and if staff can, you know, work with with the Broadway uh, Design Committee, you know, to kind of identify those landmarks that make sense for the district and. Um, I mean, I just I want to put that out there that we're not dismissive right. of the idea of landmarks. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's more about having more of an open dialogue um, rather than do you want this option or sure. nothing. Yep. Once you have a design, then you can determine the cost. Once you determine the cost, then you can determine mm -hmm. a way to fund it, whether it's mm -hmm. through fundraising, public private partnerships, donations, mm -hmm. whatever. So, right. Bill, just to kill well, it I think your motion is excellent. Um, just speaking from a business district, I think all of the business districts are also very important. And I wrote the grant to get the monument for the edge of military. We'd love to have a second one. If there's funding available, I would be interested in being able to access that. Ours will be going up in the spring, and I'll, I'll share a, a drawing coming up. Um, but I, I think, again, like your point of wayfinding across the city makes more sense than 
than specific areas because we each do have our own business districts that we're funded by the businesses um, paying the tax and you know with city help on certain things but but um, I don't know it just seems like it, you need to look at all the businesses anybody else a second Jules <coughs> motion all right, we have a motion and Joe, second by Gary, then to refer this to staff to uh, look at some other opportunities mm -hmm. uh, for developing landmarks that identify some of these districts, such as on Broadway, North End, or others in the area. Mm -hmm. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Carried. We'll include Mr. Barakowski. Number four, consideration of the possible action and request to prepare a request for proposals that would. Uh, Seek the services of a residential listing broker that would assist us in marketing and selling our properties. About that. Oh. All right. <laughs> About that. Hire hey, Tom Weber and Joe. No, 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 Tom. No, 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 <laughs> well, this is something that Sorry, looked, that's okay. Um, this is something that we've looked at um, as a staff to help us to sell the city of Green Bay and market the city of Green Bay. As you guys know, we acquire a lot of the properties from our various funding sources, and what we like to do is put together an RFP with our purchasing department, to put it out there to hopefully to get a, a somebody to partner with us to work with us to help us dispose of these properties to get them back on the on the tax levy in a timely, quick manner, the right way. Um, we feel like hiring a professional would, would help us to do that. So that's what this request would be for, is keep, uh, putting together an RFP, not just something simply just to who's going to do it, the, the cost effect of somebody that's going to do it right. So uh, the RFP would include language that we're seeking the right broker that's going to sell and partner with us. That's a great idea. That's, that's absolutely great. Did you have some of the stipulations or the points this morning of, the, of what we're going to be proposing? Now, I, I know we discussed it a little bit, but I've gotten some examples from purchasing. Um, okay. So um, I'm going to put that together. I want to, if we get your your blessing to do that, I'm going to work with purchasing in order to put some of those stipulations. And I got some examples of one um, that we could that we could go through that if you guys would would like to uh, would like to see that we can. Um, we, we can show you. So just so we're not limiting ourselves, but just simply getting bids from somebody that's going to give us a more precisely, mm -hmm. very similar to the developer that we're talking about. Let's, let's exactly. talk get the professionals yeah. about very exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Years ago, Ruth Cafe used to have a sign that talked about the price of an attorney. Right? This was a long time ago, so it said, "Which one's cheaper, hundred dollars, two hundred, or three hundred dollars an hour attorney?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, but oftentimes the three hundred dollars is a lot cheaper than the hundred dollar one because you do it in half the time and correct. That's kind of what we're thinking with this exactly. So we have a motion? Make a motion to approve the request to put together an RFP to hire a real estate broker that could partner with the city. Second. Yes. Who's the second? Yes. Matt. 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 Those in favor say aye. 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 Those carried. Number five, consideration of for action and request to allocate $7,500 for the neighborhood enhancement fund to be used to hire a second part time LTE neighborhood compliance inspector as part of the rat abatement plan. Whoa. This is me again. Um, as you may or may not have heard, we're is that with right? With a little bit of a rat issue on the west side of the map, um, so we put together um, Aaron, a fantastic job of kind of tracking our complaints. This isn't just rat complaints. This is complaints. We share this with several media outlets um, of calls coming in, conditions that are conducive to rats. Um, this time frame was for a year's time frame, primarily on the west side of Green Bay. City Council allocated five thousand um, dollars towards the uh, to help with the abatement, and what we're asking for is uh, an additional seven thousand five hundred dollars, specifically from the neighbor enhancement fund, to package together so we can hire a part-time, a second uh, neighborhood compliance inspector. That individual um, would work part-time, approximately twenty hours a week. The twelve thousand five hundred dollars in funding would get us approximately thirty weeks of funding. I'm thinking it would start from. June, hopefully through December. Um, before that time, we would then um, do an assessment how effective that position is, is um, happening, what, what what types of uh, education and enforcement effects that we've had in this particular area, hopefully knocking down the population. Um, you can see some of the uh, issues. This photo on the left here was taken actually today by one of our uh, inspectors, one of our uh, plumbing inspectors. Um, this was a backyard. Um, you can see that education is needed here. This is a large amount 
of bird seed uh, that is spilled all over the ground. Really? That's oh. that um, is going to attract birds, but it's also going to attract some issues at nighttime. Oh when yeah, when we're pricing. So is somebody pour seed on the ground? Yes. Yes. You're kidding. Yeah. Um, this is some of the other areas that are uh, what are actual inspection photos that our neighborhood compliance inspector um, deals with and, and cleans up. So uh, ongoing education enforcement with with residents of how you need to properly clean up your yards um, same thing to the photo in the middle here you can see the drag marks that's the drag marks from the from a tail from a from a norway rat um, that's still active in the community so you can see some photos on the, on the right hand side so um, we need to get the word out in order to do that we need to help get more more feet on the ground to right. be able to, to spread it because it's not just a Bird seed problem. It's not just a garbage problem. It's 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 a people. It's a that's creating yeah. those, oh, those yeah. conditions. So hiring an, ex an exterminator. It's only going to surface. It's only going to do short term solutions. We want. I want to put together a long term solution that's going to be to effectively knock the population down. Okay. I make a motion to allocate seven thousand five hundred dollars from the neighborhood enhancement fund to be used to hire a second part time. LTE neighborhood compliance inspector to give you part of the rat abatement plan. Second that. So, so motion by Gary, second with Melanie. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those carried. Thank you, Bill. Gary, could I clarify I something? Now? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, no, your days go so fast. I just want to clarify one thing on that real quick, too, is yes, that in, in my discussions uh, with Bill, is that the um, Compliance inspector is looking for rat-specific problems. They're not going to go and start citing people for a cracked pane on a window and a screen door missing a screen, that kind of thing. They're looking specifically. It, we're not just bringing somebody else in here as a revenue generator. We're bringing them in to educate and, and right. Like our, our, point our neighborhood compliance inspector last year did 1,570 complaints himself. How many? Um, 1,570 complaints. Really? Himself. Yeah. Wow. When they identify what. What are the inspectors allowed to do? I mean, they don't get involved in the remediation of the trapping, or if so, then what's their step? And the first step the is if, if they see a problem right here, we work putting orders together, enforcing our ordinances to um, remove that that problem. If the resident or the property owner is not willing to work with us, our ordinance gives us specific enforcement criteria that we can utilize, whether it be a lot cleanup, whether it be hiring a, a exterminator to come in and uh, kill the rats, and then that service gets billed back uh, to, the, uh, to the property owner. Um, a lot of times folks are willingly saying, we don't want these here, we're going to hire an, an exterminator ourselves, we'll take care of it. We didn't know that by doing this, by storing our food this way, by doing this call was causing that. So majority of the time, it's just an education that gets taken care of. There's a small percentage that say just don't listen to us, and that's where enforcement has to come into play. Okay, I, but I'm still a little foggy. You say it's kind of a limited, like you're saying, most of the time all we do is educate them instead of a rat. Uh, we edu we eliminate the problem as, as best we can or have them eliminate the problem. Mm -hmm. And if, if they're unwilling to do so, I, I don't know what the, but then, then it's the education. Twofold in every case, right? There's a rat yes. there. The yeah. first thing is we got to get rid of the rat. Second thing is we have to educate the people. We got to get mm -hmm. rid of the conditions that are, that the are conditions allowing the rat to allowing the rat to be there. Whether okay. it's sanitation, is it a food but source? But I'm just want to make sure that we're just not walking out there and somebody's handing a pamphlet and say this is what you should be doing and not doing. Go ahead, take care of the rat. No, still no, there. no, we can't. And that's that's part of the issue. That's why we need somebody else to do that because of the time and sure. the amount of complaints that we're having to come in is. It's, it's limited. There, there's follow-up. This isn't just a literature drop. Mm -hmm. There's actually human contact and follow-up with the mm -hmm. homeowners. So they're aware of what they some, need to do. In some cases, more Just like we'll cite. Is, is yeah. any of that cost assessed against the property owner? The, the enforcement cost, if they're not compliant, yeah, they're not right. working with us yet. Okay. Because yeah. I think there should be something like that. Uh, like, for instance, those pictures that I showed you, yeah. you have to do live oh, yeah. If it gets to that level where they're not oh. properly, we'll work with uh, Public Works, they'll come in with a crew, get it all cleaned up, so we're immediately remediating the problem. Yep. Yeah, the cost of that service gets built right back to the property. Because same thing with rats, if they're not, if they're continuing creating a problem, we'll get an inspector or we'll get a, a professional pest exterminator in there, they'll kill the, the rats with their methods that they use, the cost of that service gets built back. Would it be cheaper to just buy a pellet gun for all citizens? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs>
Guy, you got some more to say? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, just a couple, a couple of different things. One, uh, your remark, uh, Mr. Moore, I am sensitive to what you said, and I agreement with you. But, uh, Mr. Pappy, you came to the Protection and Welfare Committee and you asked, on these rat calls, are we supposed to go out on just the rat call, or are we supposed to look at other things? Now, we're not talking about if, you know, you're giving orders to remove trash or whatever it is, but should we do other things? And then the committee, which, uh, they voted three to one, and I suppose the uh, council passed it that you were going to do other things. When you get a rat call, you were also going to life look safety. at other other problems. Life, life safety. But problem. I mean, no, that's just a code word for, hey, we're going to write orders on other stuff. And I, you know, the, the county put 5,000. That's not. 5,000. I think we need to work with the county as much as we can, too. I, in talking with <coughs> other supervisors and a couple other aldermen, uh, more in the vein of what Mr. Weber, you know, being a former alderman, you have a different mind frame, which I appreciate. But uh, we're talking about, we thought, gee, if we have somebody that goes out, a lot of people don't know what to do. Some people have created their own problem. Okay. We write orders and you know, work it all out and everything. But not all people have that. And so I thought, in, in the discussion I had with other people, that hey, maybe we should use some of our money of our budget or whatever to get the products that are needed to... You're talking about rat traps? Rat traps or poison or whatever. Whatever is deemed oh, necessary. I'd like to, for you to... Hey, can I finish talking okay. and then I'll answer yeah, questions absolutely. after. Um, but this was just our general concept about it. <clears throat> We're more in the vein of Mr. Weber was saying, hey, let's go out and if people, you know, just look dumbfounded. Well, I don't know what to do or whatever it is. We say, hey, we got some traps here and we got them available for you for 10 bucks or whatever the hell it is. And actually show the people what to do if they don't know. And try to help them if they can. <coughs> and provide the materials that are necessary. Some people don't have an idea at all what to do. I'm a little stupid about this kind of stuff. You know? um, but I, uh, so I, I thought if we hire somebody, you want to go out and try to help people so that they have a really good feeling of when the, why the, when the inspection department came there. Because these are in response to calls. Now, sometimes a call is regarding a neighbor who is really leaving trash out and everything else, and that's a whole different story. That's, our enforcement has to go in and play with But I, I, I think uh, we want to try to get a friendly thing that says, hey, we can show you what to do. We got some stuff here. If you want to make a donation back to us, or whatever, whatever you decide. But um, <clears throat> they thought that let's do something to really hit this and see if we can wipe out 3,000 rats or whatever. What so, in other words, really down because they grow fast. What did you say? The gestation starts two days after the litter? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so it starts right back up. They, they're pretty prolific. So, I, you know, if we can go there and really hit this thing. And, Try to get 95% of it out or something with a with a real real forward hit. It, but that includes showing people really what to do. Because, you know, I mean, there may be some little old ladies that really don't know what to do or feel too timid to do it. You're certainly not against us allocating $7,500 from the Neighborhood Enhancement Fund to help with this problem, are you? Well, Mr. Pappy seemed to think that they had time to do other things besides the rat things when they're out there. Yeah. So I'd rather have some of that money you know, go to the traps and and helping the people get the job done. It's part of the rat abatement plan, it sounds to me. Well, the rat abatement plan is just giving people orders, <coughs> basically. We give them information and we tell them how to do it. You know, we say, here's what you got to do. So I, you know, sometimes you got to get down and actually just do it. Okay. And, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking if this person is hired, that they get out and help people who need help eliminate the problem. Let's get the job done. We're all in favor that's of that. what people really want the rats gotten rid of. We're all in favor of that. Okay, that's yeah. all I have to say. Right. Just, just, just that, you know, what we discussed at committee and at council was that the, the inspector is not going to, the one who's focusing on the rat problem, is not going to be looking for other problems. But just like a traffic cop, if he pulls over someone for a traffic stop and he sees drug paraphernalia in the car, he's not going to ignore it. I mean, so that's 
that's what our inspect inspector is going to do. He's not going to be out there looking for to, to make the city some money or to, you know. Right. Uh, he's focusing on the red problem. If he notices something else, we have to deal with it. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, the county is doing yeah. so. It would be nice if we could coordinate with the county. I mean, who knows what the... Well, we don't want to duplicate. We don't need to do the same thing. Maybe if the county's doing the rat traps and everything, that's not. Then we got that covered. So it, it might. I, I think with what you have on your agenda, just going forward with that for now, and uh, uh, if we can get to coordinated with the county, if there needs to be more steps from us, perhaps we can address that then. But I think for what you got going right now, we take away all the food and shelter. They're all going to go to Howard and Ashwaubenon. I'm going to need the money for that. I, 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 I've, I've talked to some of the uh, village uh, uh, board members. I said, hold your hat. We're okay. sending them your way. So, okay. Randy, were you, were you saying that there is or should be more coordination with the county? Well, I think it, well, they allocated some money, so it'd be nice if we could uh, figure out what they're going to do with it. I just got a call from Bernier and uh, uh, I don't know what it's about, but I couldn't answer it. But... Hopefully, uh, we could coordinate a little bit and and because uh, why duplicate? You know, I think about what we've got going here. This is this is a good city plan because this is a problem right. that is systemic and ongoing. I mean, the rats were never going to eradicate, so it's good to have to do this and to keep doing it to make sure we keep control of the population. But for this immediate moment, with the county money, it'd be good to know what they're going to do with it. And, and then that would help guide what we, if we need to do anything else or not. I've actually talked to the county. I've mm -hmm. talked to um, two uh, representatives from the county health department. Um, there seems to be a, I don't want to speak for them, but from the conversation I have, there seems to be a disconnect between, because the county's in agreement with us that education and enforcement is the best way to go. The disconnect is that there's some representatives out there that want to purchase rat traps. They want to have those rat traps be given to either the neighborhood associations or given to us, and then we pass them out to our residents. It's not a good idea, in my personal opinion. You're going to have to, as Alderman Zimmer was saying, how do you train and educate all these people on how to use a rat trap? Who's going to have? Who's going to assume the liability to not only service these rat traps but setting these rat traps? Um, what happens if they're not being used correctly? Um, they talk, he talked about the gestation period. That is just going to take care of the short-term surface level part of the problem. It's going to catch one or two rats. If you talked to the uh, professionals, exterminators, what happens is, is with the Norway rats, if, if the traps are not put in use uh, correctly, the rats will get um, scared and nervous of those traps, or they won't go by them. They'll, they'll just completely avoid them. So it's not going to, it, it will, will it kill some rats? Yes. Is it going to solve the problem? No. Okay. The problem is it's a, it's a resident problem. It is a people problem. If you see the pictures, if you go out in the neighborhoods, it's food, water, shelter. Now in terms of our inspectors, our inspectors will not have the time to focus on the other things like the peeling paint on the garage. Those are complaints that come in that we deal with in addition to doing these proactive surveys. What was talked about in the Protection and Welfare Committee, if, if one of our inspectors goes out to a property and goes behind the house and sees a life safety ordinance violation, I would not ignore that, nor would I hope anybody would ignore that. If they are, if, if they are ignoring that, well then that's more of a problem that that person has individually. Um, but our job is to keep people safe. And I would not want, if, if some, some large, very large life safety issue is back there, we need to keep that person safe. They may not know that is there. That's what the additional part that we're talking about is going to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that I, uh, but my, my question, my concern goes to the education or, or how we're, the, mm -hmm. you go out to the guy who's 45 years old and, and, and you give him the information, say this is what you need to do, now that I clean up, et cetera, but now you've got some rats there, maybe you can contact uh, the next mm -hmm. year. You go out to the same house or a different house, and it's an 86-year-old little lady who's not, it's not all there yet. Mm -hmm. And you start giving her, telling her, you know, what she needs to do from the from the standpoint of mitigating the problem today, getting rid of that rat. Totally, there has to be some intervention there. I think on behalf of the city to say, look, if you need to, and we'll put it on your tax bill, or we'll give you a bill for it. 
we can contact, contact the exterminator or, or whatever on your behalf. That's Sign right here, we'll do it. That's Is part it? of what we do. Okay. Uh, that's why I want to make sure that's done. It's an individual one, case. One fits all. It's an individual case by case basis. You guys come along and see how our inspectors, they have to fit their, how they're addressing those things individually every single day. That's how they deal with Resident A, like you were saying, is completely different than how they're going to be dealing with Resident B. Well, I think this is a good idea. I mean, we've been talking about rats in the city for the, the issue is a long time. The issue is we have we have mm -hmm. we have only a limited number of resources. Right. To Randy, you have more to say? No, no, but do you need anything else? Okay, okay, I got to run. Okay, I just say I've heard of grabbing a tiger by the tail, but I think we got a rat by the tail. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to reiterate a few things that that Randy mentioned or that Alder Scannell mentioned about our committee. First of all. When um, Mr. Pappy came to Protection and Welfare, and I'm, I'm the vice chair of that committee, um, he very clearly was asking us for direction. He did not come with a plan to say, you know, we will hire this person and then we will go and look for other complaints besides rats. He very clearly asked us for direction to and, and to say, if there are health and safety issues, do you want us to address those? Of course I, as an older person, want those addressed. I think it would be very wrong of us to allow those kind of issues to exist and to have an inspector notice them and then do nothing about them. So we gave him directions, by, as it was a three to one vote, that yes, please go seek if you can hire another part-time inspector. And yes, if any inspector sees a health and safety issue, it is, it, it is incumbent upon that person, if it's an egregious issue, to do something about it. But the intent is for rats. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 for the property located at 901, 907, and 913 Main Street. So you recall this is a property that is out kind of by the Greyhound bus station right. across yes. from Whitney Park? Yes. Um, and is here it's back there. Gary is here if you'd like to hear him speak. They've been working on this for a while, they've, but they've run into um, some environmental um, um, studies that took longer than they should have taken. And so Garrett's looking for an extension on his um, the planning option he's got here. And we'd like six months to uh, extend it to the planning option. And it's, I think, what were the environmental? It was, it was just coordinating the geotechnical with okay. uh, phase two environmentals. Took a little bit longer. Um, but now everything's moving forward smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, things are looking good on the side. So we don't have a problem with no. I don't think we need a meeting. No. I make a we don't want to listen to it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's a I like Gary. <laughs> now that's a motion we can get behind. <laughs> 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 You'll love the 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 problem is that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a second. Yeah. Well, actually, okay, I All second. You have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve. Second by Matt. We have a motion to second then the... Uh, for the extension by the planning option of the GB Real Estate Development LLC for the part of 913 for six months, right? Was it fair to say? Aye. Who is the second on that? I am. Thank you. Thank you for being a good sport, Gary. Yeah, thank you. Consideration of the action and development agreement with Creative Edge Properties LLC for the property located at 159 North Maple Avenue. All right, so 159 North Maple. Great. Uh, yeah. oh, I remember 159 North Maple. Right. Oh, yeah. We're moving forward. Oh, good. Um, so we put out the RFP and we received three proposals three. back. Three. did? Yes. Um, two for a single family construction, one for a mixed uh, commercial and single family unit. Um, and we, as staff, looked at the three proposals and did our standard. Um, evaluation on it and grading. Um, we're looking at recommending going forward with um, Creative Edge Properties LLC um, as their, their project scored the highest on our ranking. Here. That's why you need a realtor. They take clearer pictures. Strategic. Yes. So the drive-by pictures. Yes, yeah. the before. That was the <laughs> That's the before. Everything was blurry about before. Is this the one we walked through? Yes. Yes. Yep. This is the breakdown. Oh, okay. 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 Okay
That's the motion. <laughs> The bottom line of Kimmy Seldon, which I, I definitely question what I want to put the bottom line of Kimmy Seldon. <laughs> the developers are here if you want to no. talk to them about it, but the proposal's in the package. Well, I think your proposal is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve a development agreement with Creative Edge Properties <coughs> LLC for the property located at 159 North Maple. Second. A uh, motion by Nomi, second by uh, Beth, support the uh, development agreement with Creative Edge Properties. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Who is carried? Number eight, uh, consideration, possible action on the development agreement with WS Properties LLC for the property located at 926 Howard Street. 925 Howard Street. 925. That's right. Well, um, so here's another property that we've been talking about for a while here at the RDA. Um, when we originally spoke about it, um, you know, there were some issues about with the property. We ended up finally landing it about a year later. Um, WS Properties so far has been the only person to submit a final proposal on this. Um, we have walked a few people, multiple developers, I guess, through the property. Um, after looking at their proposal, we graded it like we would any of the other ones, and you know, it scored a. 40 out of 48, so we think that, that was a pretty good proposal mm -hmm. and it would be nice to just move forward with the property. Um, WS Properties has also done another property with us recently at uh, 1004 Delsman, which they were able to successfully complete and you know, move on onto the tax, tax audit, so. Great. Yeah. Motion? I'll make a motion to approve the expense execution of the open agreement with WS Property and LLC for the solution and we have with the property located at 925 Howard Street, parcel 3 47. Second. Motion to the second then to proceed with the development agreement. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Consideration plus direction and request for short sale of 923 Langley Avenue. Kevin. Kevin. Yes. Kevin. Kevin. Good afternoon. Um, the report, item number 12, um, the property is uh, was purchased by the owner and the current owner. 12 and 9. 9. 9. 9. 9. 9. 12, I'm sorry, did I say 9? No, you said 12. Oh, okay. 9. Oh, it's actually We're thinking nine. number 9. Oh, okay. Number 9. Number 9. Okay. Item number 12. So the uh, property is purchased. Oh, I'm sorry, it says 12 on my. Yours is an old phone. Yeah. It's a phone deal. Okay, I need to understand. Um, in 2001, the homeowner uh, got some down payment assistance from Naval Works, and in 2010, we gave them a uh, housing rehab loan of $25,000. Since then, they've been uh, in uh, financial trouble and have had the house in and out of foreclosure. Apparently, a uh, select portfolio service bought the property from the original, uh, bought the original mortgage out, and um, the owners have hired a realtor, and he's been uh, in the process of trying to sell the property to the, to the right owner. He's been, uh, we've had this request before us uh, previously, I think it was before us, in 2016 for a short sale, and at that time they were offering 12000 this time they're offering uh, 5000 um, The item at the bottom of the uh, the report, we don't quite understand. I mean, staff has discussed this uh, quite a bit, and we actually talked to some attorneys about it. Um, the unpaid principal balance that has increased from the original up in front of us to 65 uh, 360 and then there's all this interest and escrow and other things that they've calculated. We're not sure where that is placed. We don't think it's in front of us, but it very well could be. But anyway, um, after reviewing this, we uh, we thought that this was not a good deal for us. And we had suggested that you deny this option. We do have a realtor here who uh, would like to address the authority, if you'd like to listen to them. So, hmm. And there are pictures of the current. This is the current uh, condition. I took the, the interior picture through the front window, but this is the exterior of the building. I could not get inside. And and our realtor may or may not have pictures. I don't know. Do you have pictures, Dave? I was not able to get them. Okay. But I can speak for the property 
the condition has since changed on it. Um, make a motion to open the meeting. Hold on. No, we'd have to open I make a motion to open the meeting. Second. second. We motion to second and open meeting public discussion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Could you please come up and give your name and the spelling so we have it for the record? Uh, yes. Sit there. Stand. You can stand. stand. Okay. Uh, my name is Dave Forehand. Uh, last name is spelled just like tennis, F-O-R-E-H-A-N-D. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Uh, what ended up happening was the current sell uh, the sellers ended up moving out of the property. Uh, they moved out, I believe it was around the last October, and they pretty much, you know, th they had expected the property to go into foreclosure. Uh, Select Portfolio Servicing, the ones who currently have the property, um, they're not the easiest to work with. But when the sellers moved out, Select Portfolio Servicing, yep, they changed the locks and they never ended up winterizing the property. So as you guys remember, we had that cold spell back in December and what ended up happening was the pipes froze, the uh, toilet ended up cracking, the tub ended up cracking, there was issues with pretty much everything in the house. Um, when I was able to get in there, uh, what ended up happening was uh, the water not only cracked it, uh, cracked the pipes and everything, but it also decided to break through the floor tiles in the bathroom, uh, in the kitchen, and it was basically like a little swimming pool. So um, the basement, which had flooded, uh, I'm assuming that the uh, furnace is probably shot at this point, as well as um, the water heater, I'm pretty sure, is gone as well. Wow. I can't speak to whether or not there will be mold issues at all. I can only imagine there will be, depending on how long the process takes. I hope it's hot enough. Mm -hmm. Did you get any pictures while you were in there? I haven't been in there for about a week and a half, two weeks now. Um, but when you were in there, you, did you get I any didn't pictures? take any at the time. And Kevin actually asked, I can, I can get in there now, so I'll be able to take pictures, but I haven't mm -hmm. been able to at the moment. But there's probably about a... The bathroom, the bathroom uh, alone has probably a good inch crack where the floor buckled and the water was shooting out through the floor. So, who owned the house at that time? Um, what do you mean? Well, at the time, recently? Well, then nobody had it heated or anything. Um, it's still the same seller, but the seller's pretty much written it off. The seller's been pre foreclosure, and it's basically. It's in foreclosure, isn't it? No, it's not. They have it on hold at the moment. Oh, I thought it's select portfolio only. N not at the moment. <coughs> so, it's one of those things. If the deal ends, um, if the deal falls apart and there's not an immediate deal, then it, it will be in foreclosure. Okay, it's been so. in and out of Liz Penn's yep. a couple of times. About four or five times now. Okay, so but who's who's bringing it out? Uh, they're not making any payments to get it. No. Okay. No, they've completely they're written past it off. Four or five. Yep. So I have a question. So this you have a buyer for sixty five on this? 65, uh sixty four. Who's paying sixty four thousand dollars for a house that's water damaged to the extent right. that it sounds like it needs to be torn down? Um I'm doing remodel. I mean I'm curious. At the moment at the moment it is a uh, broker that is looking at turning it into a rental property. Um, she has plans to tear out uh, at the reduced price now, she's looking to completely gut the kitchen, the bathroom, mm -hmm. tear out all of the plumbing and redo everything. Um, the exterior structure of the house is in really good shape. Um, the living room, it doesn't, you know, that's in good shape as you can see from the one picture. Yeah. Um, it's, it needs a lot of paint and probably some new trim, which isn't evident, but you know, for the so most part. What are the contingencies on that offer? Is it a written offer? It's a written offer. Is it cash or is it financing? And what it is financing, but it's conventional. And, okay. um, but that can be a problem. 
It can be, but how the offer is written is even uh, she wants to have an inspection, but it is not based on her terminating the offer based on inspection. So the only contingency is essentially financing. But if she is specified that the inspection is there's not a cure factor in there. Correct. There it is. It is as is. It's a, it, it is yeah, as yeah, is. I'm if sorry. She accepts so. it as is. I mean, as Correct. Is just a term. Um, okay. Well, Joe. I have a question just with regards to this project. So if this thing goes into foreclosure then, we have a lien on it. What wouldn't we go after wouldn't this be a property we'd go after then? To try to catch it on a short sale? You wanna stick that kind of money? What's our exposure? Uh, well we don't know that, you know, without an inspection we don't need you might thousand. We're going to lose. You might see this before gonna, the committee yeah, again in two years right? as a Brown County tax foreclosure. <laughs> huh? So you might see it before the committee here again in twenty-four months as a Brown County tax foreclosure. Yeah, I personally, I, I would treat it like the plague. I'm just being honest with you. Sure. You know, it, when the weather warms Those up, aren't fun. the yeah, water water, water issues fun. can turn into mold issues and mold issues. Well, when there's a lender, there's going to be an appraiser. Uh, an appraiser's going to come through and yeah. and see this thing and talk to the lender and be like, what do you think? Well, that's what I said. The lender is you know, if it was cash. Scary. You got one thing, but you got a lender yeah. involved. Um, you know, their underwriting guidelines aren't going to, all that stuff is going to have to be remediated before they even close. They won't escrow for that. Helps that it's conventional, but financing is still a contingency. It's, it's so still everything else is rolled into the financing anyway. Well, you're going to chase a lot of good money after some bad stuff. You know? I don't know. So well, you, your recommendation is that, that, that we well, well, go ahead. Sir. Our recommendation was to deny the sale. Uh, uh, and deny the sale, or just deny the short sale, and, and you know. Don't approve the short sale. Go let it go into foreclosure. We thought we could buy it um, in foreclosure sale, rehab it further, whatever needs to be done, and put it back on the market and get a single family or owner into the property. Now we don't know the we don't know the extent of the damage in there. Uh, I wish Dave had pictures, but he couldn't get in. Understandable. Um, you know, these are the pictures that I got through the window. I couldn't see the bathroom or the kitchen through there, but you know, yeah. well enough from the side porch to take a picture. You know, I could I could see through the blinds, but not really get a decent picture. So, so are you going to be so able? You going to be? Are you going to be able to get? The, you got sixty, eighty, ninety something. Uh, by the time you get done, you're going to have a hundred thousand dollars, and then you're going to have the uh, rehab cost. What what's that square footage in that location going to bring you to rehab? To? Oh, I can get 130 or 40 or 50 mm. or 60. I don't know what real estate is selling for in the neighborhood between probably between 85 and 100 um, in that neighborhood. I think if we acquire it on the market, depending on what we have to buy it for, um, and we stick, you know, possibly $20,000 more into it, we could sell it on the market and come break even, get a single family homeowner in there go to moderate income home or and possibly make out. I mean we're running a risk as mm -hmm. as usual. Well, you know, we always we always we already have money into this. We right. we've done the exterior, we've done you know a lot of interior work on the property. We brought it up to grade. The plumbing issues we're not certain that there's uncertainty there. I'm not certain about the furnace, but a furnace replacement a house that size thirty five hundred yeah. water heater nine hundred bucks. Um, you know, so that's that's. We're more concerned dollars. about the flooring damage if water was coming uh, up through flooring. You know, if you have to do a self structural, structural does right. that have drain tile in it? Some? No, it does no, not. It has uh, it has a sump pump on the other the far side of the house. Where's it getting the water from? What? Drain Where's it getting the water from? It was coming yeah. from the uh, broken plumbing. Broken plumbing. Frozen plumbing. No, I, yep. I, I I don't understand the purpose of a sump pump without drain tiles. Uh, oh, right. uh, the sump pump was just to hole. lowest hole yeah. and have it something pumped out. Um, there was a spot where I did have a basement inspector come in before all of the damage uh, way back originally, and he said that to put in drain tile um, just to the low spot and run that to the sump pump was about 
2400 or something. Is that the block foundation or board? No, it's, um, it's, it's yeah, it's stone with yeah, plaster, plaster around it. Around it. Um, right now, uh, I did a check just for other homes that were in about a half mile radius of that one. Um, there are three properties that uh, are currently on the market. There's uh, one on 11th, 11th Avenue, one on Gross Avenue, and one on Redley Court. Um, all of them are under contract. Uh, the they were listed for about 130, 130. Uh, well, two of them are about 130, and one of them, uh, the one on uh, Redley Court, is about listed at 140 at the moment. But square footage wise, average is around uh, 70 dollars per square foot, 72, 70 right in that range the list those list are the listings so those are not the sales uh, so the what's sales the square, footage here? Uh, the square footage on this one I want to say is around I believe it was about 1200 uh, the sales uh, over the <coughs> last what sold recently is there was one on 13th Avenue Works Avenue Norwood and Mullet Place uh, their sales were um, well, the closest, the closest um, comp was on 13th. That one had quite a bit of damage as well. That one was listed at 54, 9, and sold for 48. The others were more normal. Uh, they were listed around 90,000 and 105. Uh, the one that listed at 90 sold at 80. The one listed at 89 sold at 81, and then the one listed at 105 sold at 103. Which so I mean, at, at your seventy dollars, what these were listed for, which isn't necessarily that's not what they're got. getting necessarily. Yeah, right, correct. Right. That's uh, until it closes, you won't know. But, correct. But at seventy dollars a square foot, you, you said twelve hundred square feet here. About. So that's take. that's eighty four thousand. I think we I, I come up with on that eighty four thousand dollars is what you're gonna. I'd make. say, depending on the market, it give or take probably five thousand either which way. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing the hundred twenty or hundred thirty thousand dollars that we're going to need to get out of it. You may not get that, but you may get a single family homeowner, mm -hmm. uh, which stabilizes the neighborhood. We've, we've invested the money, and you know, you know, we've got money invested in there, and and uh, there's been some damage to the home, obviously. So we, you know, we've taken a chance. We've got. An offer, a short sale offer. It's gonna. I don't know if you can guarantee us that five thousand or not. Actually, that part I can guarantee. It would be uh, five thousand one hundred and twenty. Um, select portfolio servicing. After a good hour on the phone, going back and forth, I found out that they will not pay more than uh, pay what they call a junior lien holder more than eight percent. Were they the same company that? that you were working with when you, we had the twelve thousand uh, dollars yes what happened was at the time um, there was a tax uh, tax credit that was going around and they were willing to pay uh, that was like a complete separate note so they were gonna get the that they were gonna back. they were gonna they weren't gonna get uh, I think they would have gotten the majority of it back but there was also a uh, bonus that the city it would have gotten, and that's where that twelve thousand would have come from, which that tax credit ended, and so did that offer. And then, right before that went into foreclosure, we ended up getting another offer on it. So you said this this offer fifty one twenty is from Select. Correct. This would be. And they would buy us buy our interest out at fifty one hundred dollars. Correct. That is correct. Yep. Well, I understand your concern, and the concern of of the city should be for you know what's the neighborhood going to be like. Mm -hmm. But what are our, our, our options on top? What is it going to look like, whether we take control and, and put a single family, or what are the options when somebody else buys it? What are they going to do if they turn it into a rental? It's possible, most likely a single family. Is that the worst thing in the world? It's still on the tax rolls. Right. We want it on the tax rolls. It'll be on the tax rolls either way. Yeah. Right. Um, you say we should turn this down? That was our recommendation. Well, you're turning down the, the $5,100. The short sale. Right. Mm -hmm. He's saying we should turn down taking a check for $5,100 and walking away mm -hmm. versus 
by uh, getting in the in the fight here in foreclosure, buy this out of foreclosure, and that may cost us a ton of money. Uh, the, the, the total debt that they're showing here is hundred six thousand dollars on it. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to have thirty or forty thousand dollars worth of damages. Oh, more than that. Uh, probably. I, yeah. I know. I don't know as far as that goes. At this point, it's all speculation. Yes. Right. We are, right. It's all speculation on what the, the damage is. Fifty one hundred is not speculation. No. Right. Right. No. right. The but the damage is. Yeah. So yeah. we and, 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 and putting that for the for what we want to do the good of the neighborhood. I understand your positions, but I'm. Just from a rational standpoint, I'm saying, you know, there's a lot of rental properties in the city. You know, let this go to become a rental property and don't chase, uh, write our, our our losses down to 19 grand or whatever it is, and, grand, yeah. and be done. I just take it and run. I think we did. Uh, I didn't get your loss on this. I don't know. Joe's the new real estate expert in town. There, he's he's quite good at it. But Joe, what's your you? Oh God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> this thing is a disaster. Well, it's not a disaster. It's it's a it's a conundrum. Yeah, this is That's what it is good. because we don't know the extent of the damage, and and we're chasing something we may not get. You know, here we have a bird in the hand, the fifty one hundred dollars. But staff is of the mind that we can do better. Should we uh, should we table this? Go inside and get those pictures. As far as select portfolio servicing goes, this is kind of the one of the last things that they would need. Um, as far as getting in to take pictures, I'm sure I could probably get in over the weekend, but yeah, in which case simple. that just pushes it out a little more. Mm -hmm. But what you're describing, I mean, what is your best guess? You walked yep. over the property. What is your best guess of cost? to bring that back to a marketable property? Um, and I know you're not a contractor, maybe you are. I'm not a contractor, no. Um, I would say the plumbing, you're probably, to have a licensed plumber in there, you're probably looking somewhere around the 10, 12,000 is a ballpark. Um, Kevin was, in my opinion, spot on as far as furnace and water heater. Um, as far as the flooring, it depends because right now there's there was a nice tile that was in there which that's all gone if you're tearing out subflooring and just putting down a laminate you could probably get away with that for maybe I would say two three thousand easy yeah you, you, you put it in subflooring and and a laminate for two or three thousand no way Oh yeah, no. Oh, uh, He's saying you yeah. easily do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, probably more. So, so yeah, I'm I'm thinking six, seven, eight thousand right. dollars. Probably, but yeah, it, it, it depends know. on the extent yeah. of the damage. Yeah, don't it right. does. It, it does. Yes, but oh, you know, when I go into something, it's always the worst case scenario. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and and if if David has been in there and he's it, he's seen damage, I don't know how many damage properties you've been in. I have a lot of experience with this, but I really haven't seen what's going on. So I can't throw out the numbers. I can just right. ballpark it for you. Okay. You know, um, and, and that's bottom line. So, so he's up to 16 or 17 grand now, I think. What you probably at so. least. Mm -hmm. 20 grand. Where does the uh, 5100 go when we get that? Go back into the revolving home? It goes home. back in the home. Oh, oh, home. So we're basically, we'd be right now 20,000. 20, yeah, 20, Put 25 into it, 5100 back. Slap ourselves in the wrist. Let's say sometimes, you know. Well, you know, where are we going to make that twenty thousand back? Are we going to make it by buying the thing through foreclosure, rehabbing it, and selling it? I don't think so. No. I don't think we're going to make twenty thousand back right there. I mean, I, I guess I would just, I would just support that we put this thing through, get somebody in there to rehab it, get it back on the tax roll. Yeah. Would, Is that a motion? Make a motion. Is that a motion? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll make that motion if it's a short sale on this. No, you, you deny the short sale. Take it in the no. 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 George, the motion was to accept the short sale. Please repeat your motion. Yeah. <laughs> motion is to accept the short sale on 923 Langley Avenue. Motion by George. Second by Jim. Jim, those in favor say aye. 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 Wonderful.
Thank you. Um, Number no, 10, uh, consideration of possible action the contract with the uh, Tech Vision and Solutions for the repair of the 15 uh, HVAC air handling RTU units at the uh, KI Convention Center. That's me. All right, so you recall we had to do an emergency repair last year. Right. So these units are starting to age across the original unit. So uh, in working with John Miller with the Department of Public Works, what we'd like to do is that if we, first of all, replacing them all would be over a million dollars. We believe we can um, repair them and build them, which would be another 10 to 15 years of life. We like to do those roughly about one a month, you know, groups of three, and just work through the, through them completely until they're done. Um, What's the lifetime on them then, do you think? We can get 10 to 15 more years once really? we rebuild them. And it's an estimate because they won't know exactly the cost yeah. until they get in there and start sure. rebuilding them. But the, the estimate that you saw kind of gives you kind of a rough yeah. estimation. Um, so, the, so what I'm looking for is the ability to, you know, spend up to 15000 roughly or every three months on the replacement of these units. And until we're they're completed. We're okay not going on for bids. If we do it, yes, like according to the Public Works Department, doing it in this manner, if we're doing them one at a time. Um, we can do it this way. And that money would come out of the capital fund for the... Uh, it would come out of the camp and it's fine. Yep. Yeah. Well, I think that's best route to go. I have a motion to approve contract with Tech Vision and Solutions for the building of remaining HVAC air handling units at the KI Convention for the three years at a time at a cost not to exceed $15,000 for three until they're all completed. Just a question. That's yep. your motion? Yes. All right. Motion for Gary. I have a question. Yes. Yes. Have we worked with them before? Yes. Okay. okay. These are people that actually have worked with us. Okay. So they know the name. I, I wish a second. Second one. Jim. 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 Oh, okay. Uh, Jim second is not long. Sorry about that. No, one. that's okay. Those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Uh, let's see. Uh, and just bills. to let you on that, I guess just a, an informational item on that. We are going to start looking at replacing the carpet in the original KI Center this year. Um, probably coming into 2019. I just want to miss that carpet. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we pick the design? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Just kidding. <laughs> you want that? <laughs> you want that responsibility? No, just kind of a heads up. <laughs> we'll start, we're going to start to work on that. Number 12, consideration plus action on the approval of the final payment to the Northeast Asphalt Loan of 1548 for a contract CD 1702. Valerie so we'll resurfacing. So we'll Valerie. Valerie. Gary. Those very CI? Aye. Those carried. Number 13. Consideration possible action for approval of the final payment to uh, <coughs> Bartel Construction, the amount of $1,000 for contract CD 1702, sidewalk and pavement repair. Moved to approve. Motion by Jim, second by. <coughs> okay. Tom, those very say aye. 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 Consideration plus action on acceptance of financial report and check register as provided. So moved. Which by Jim? Second by Gary, those very say aye. Was carried. Meeting adjourned. Aye. 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 Aye.